Hey everybody, come on in, come on in and grab a seat. And welcome, welcome, welcome to my review of Married at First Sight, a season a 16. So now we're moving on to Married at First Sight, a season 16. We're moving on to Nicole and Chris, the only, only bright spot um, for right now of the weddings that took place. The only bright spot. Love them, love them, love them. I am still enthusiastically a two, a thumbs up. Um, you know what? It's so many other couples we know that aren't going to make it. And we have a couple of uh, shaky couples uh, that this is one I feel really comfortable with uh, that will make it every week. I feel stronger and stronger about them. And let me tell you, if any of you uh, don't believe in the power of positive thinking, you need to believe in it now with Nicole and Chris, because Nicole is the queen of positive thinking. And let me tell you, she has even uh, excited me to say, you know what? I'm going to start incorporating even more of it because this girl thinks positively, positively, positively. You know, they said they was both matched because they both have a big hearts. I can see it. I can see that this match was a good match because they really do both have big hearts and they're super enthusiastic about each other. The other part I like about this couple is they're not superficial. They have figured out that these streets out here, these dating streets are uh, treacherous. And they really don't want to be in them again. And they said they want to settle down. They want a family. They want to find someone who's going to love them. And they have told themselves that we're going to make this marriage work hook or crook. And let me tell you, that is 50% of the game. That is 50% of the game. So I really like the attitude that they're bringing in here. And this is really the attitude that anyone that comes on Married at First Sight should bring. I don't like this idea of you need to just be coming in Married at First Sight to go shopping. No, you need to come on Married at First Sight and be committed. And that is what Nicole and Chris are doing. And Nicole said she don't like to go shopping anyway. When she was going shopping for that wedding dress, she was like, I don't like shopping. Uh, probably because, you know, she probably has some a body positivity issues she need to work on in the past and present. Because a lot of times when you're not comfortable 100% with your body, uh, shopping is the last thing you want to do. Um, so I understand because I know that's how I feel sometimes when I got to go look for a swimsuit. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, I do not like the way I look in this swimsuit. Uh, so I understand how sometimes shopping ain't the most fun thing to do when you're trying to work on a certain segments of your body to get in the right way, get in the right place. But she finally chose a dress she liked. Be honest with you, I don't need all this a dress shopping uh, married at first sight. They really could skip right to the weddings. And then I can see the, the wedding dress at the wedding just like... I do when I go to a wedding. I actually like the reveal of the dress at the wedding. So to be honest with you, I would much prefer to see the dress that they choose uh, when they reveal it at the wedding. I actually think it's more of a dramatic effect, to be honest with you, in terms of uh, as a person watching the show. What do y'all think? But another thing they got in common is they both have fear of rejection. <laughs> they tired of being rejected out here in these streets. And guess what? As a result of them not liking to be rejected, they have come into this marriage saying uh, they're not going to be doing the rejecting. That's another thing. Sometimes what's the old saying? Do unto others as you would like others to do unto you. And these two are practicing that because what they're saying is we both have been rejected time and time again. And we're not going to come into this relationship of rejecting each other. We're going to come into this relationship accepting each other. And they know what I really, really like this about this too. I think these two are going to go on and have a wonderful, a wonderful marriage. If they can keep this energy, if they can keep this attitude, I think they're going to have a really, really good time. And the other thing I like, I still like about Nicole is she is so aware of what her flaws are. And when I say flaws, I mean things that people that have rubbed people the wrong way and before her parents talk about it. Her friends talk about it. She talks about it. And what she knows is her personality her, her speech or whatever can sometimes overwhelm people and be too much. And so when she comes into a situation, even though she is, she's not saying I'm going to be someone completely different. She also is willing to listen to people when someone says, Hey, you need to tone it down. That's what I like. That's the balance that I like, that it doesn't mean that you always have to pretend you're someone else, but also means that if someone comes up to you and say, Hey, you know what? Can you tone that down just a little bit? You won't take the position. Oh, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? No, you change. I ain't changing. That's what I like, like her, which means she's willing to compromise. She's willing to work with someone. She's willing to bend. She's willing to do these things because she's obviously heard this 
time and time again. And what she's saying is, if this is what's keeping me away from finding a partner who wants to love me and be with me, then I'm willing to make the adjustments. And I like that about her. I really do. But that suit Chris chose, oh, good Lord, it looked like a mariachi suit. It was ill-fitting. It was baggy. I really didn't like the suit at all. All he needed was some ruffles in front and, I, and, and, a, and a guitar or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> acoustic guitar and I'll be like oh is this the mariachi band coming to play for the wedding it was a horrible look it was a horrible choice but hey you know what that's okay because Nicole is not into the outside she's on, she's into the inside <laughs> and who cares about that suit okay let's keep it moving because that suit uh, was ill-fitting even when his friend came in came into the room and saw him in and he goes what is this your pajamas <laughs> it was so baggy it was like something you wear to bed so you could be comfortable <laughs> But he said he don't want to be out here on these streets after his wedding. Uh, Chris says he's not trying to go back to the streets. Nicole says she ain't been in love since uh, Benifer was around the first time. Not the second time, the first time. She said it's been a long time since she's been in love. And she says, oh, darn it, I'm going to get in love. I'm going to fall in love. I'm going to have me a husband, a man. I'm going to get married. Uh, these two have hit the lotto. This is how they feel. They are walking through this wedding and this experiment as if they just won the mega millions for $2 billion. And I'm here for it. I am here for it. And let me tell you, all this positive thinking that they're doing, it must have manifested in its way because these two have already said they predicted each other's names. He said he knew he was going to marry Nicole. Remember before he said Nicole uh, with uh, brown hair? She said she had chosen the name Chris. They both had done that. They both gave each other these moon rings or these stones, kind of in the same family of gifts. I don't know. Let me tell you, the stars are lining up. All you psychics out there, astrologists or whatever else, what's going on here? What is going on? Because there seems a lot of things that are lining up. Give me your insight because they have predicted each other's names, what they may look like. They gave each other almost identical gifts. It seems as if this marriage is a marriage, a match made in heaven. The stars of the cosmos and everything is, am I the only one feeling this? Am I the only one feeling this? Because this is exactly what I am feeling. And she was on the after party too. Check out my video. And let me tell you, uh, she still looked like she in love. She was boohooing. She was like, um, had a great time. But let me tell you, she tells this story how she actually was triggered by the wedding because she actually said she wasn't feeling her all her all because she said that when they were in the room and they were doing the ch champagne toast, someone pointed the champagne bottle at her and the champagne went all over her, her hair, her makeup, her dress, everything. So she said right before she was about to go out, she was completely wet from the champagne toast, y'all. Oh my goodness. I, I mean, I couldn't tell at the wedding. Could y'all tell? But she said she wasn't really feeling comfortable, but you know what? It didn't matter. That's why I think maybe this was just an alignment out in the stars and God in heaven, because I couldn't tell any of that at all uh, that she had just gotten a whole champagne toast um, accidentally. I thought she looked beautiful. I thought that her makeup really looked nice at the wedding. So I didn't notice it at all, but she told that story on the after party. Be sure to watch my video and I'm going to um, talk about it even more. But they had them a nice good, big a big kiss at the end. They started off that they marriage correctly. And let me tell you, I am all in on this couple. This might be the only couple uh, that really gets us excited. I'm still excited about Eris and Jasmine as well. But the other three couples, I'm not feeling good about. But y'all can watch my other videos on them as well. Uh, but um, are they going to have to carry the show? Is Nicole and uh, Chris going to have to carry the show in terms of our enthusiasm? And I know a lot of y'all aren't into Eris and Jasmine, but I'm still in their camp too. So I still got two uh, horses in the race uh, today, Eris and Jasmine and Nicole and Chris. So be sure to watch my other videos. Uh, that's it, y'all. I'll talk to you later.